The story of life not to show you how much power you have in Jesus Christ. First Peter 4 and 12. Do not think it strange at the fiery trial that comes to try you as though some strange things were happening to you. First Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you are also called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Because see, many people are going to be watching what's happening in your life. First Corinthians 9 and 9 and 25. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown. They will not lose, but we do it to get a crown. Well, it, they said that that will not last, but they do it to get a crown that will last forever. And see, the storms of life come. And just like in this analogy right here, you know, when people have done you wrong and she has the opportunity to, uh, you know, kind of kill her enemy. But what happens when you show grace and mercy? You know what I'm saying? God said, if you forgive them, I'll forgive you. You know what I'm saying? That's power. Like, and God has to unlock that power. And he uses that. And those people that come, the persecutors and despitefully uses, God said, pray for them. James 1 and 12, it says, blessed is the man that endures temptation for he, he, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. So that means that if you withstand any temptation, there's always a promise. God is going to bless you. Romans 5 and 3, not only that, but we also rejoice in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You know, and, and the storms of life come to show you how much power you have already inside you. Again, through Jesus Christ, God is trying to show you like, you know, just like right here when the enemy tries to, you know, say, throw your past. Just like in the sales when the enemy tries to throw up in your, you know, throw your past up, you know, saying it's a, it's a teaching point that you can help others get through. Like, you know, people ask me like, how, you know, how, how can you have this faith? And it's because of everything that I've been through. Like God has used that, you know, but that's what the enemy likes to bring up. But, you know, don't get me wrong. There's some things that is just between you and God, but you always supposed to have a testimony of where God has brought you from. And one of the fruits of the spirit is long suffering. It's having or showing patience in spite of troubles, especially those caused by other people. Ephesians 6 and 12, it talks about the struggle against flesh and blood, not against humans. It's, it's not against humans. You know, we have a common enemy. That's the devil. You know, we got it. You know, people got all these demons and stuff like that. And perseverance, what is that? Steadfast and doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. I mean, think about it. Like God knows exactly what he's doing. And when we wrestle, what is that? It's struggle with a difficulty or problem. What is struggle? Make a forceful or violent efforts to get free of restraint or constriction. You know what I'm saying? But when you allow God to use all what happened in your past, you know what I'm saying, to keep you humble, you know what I'm saying, so you can help others. That's what you got to do. I mean, think about it. When Harriet Tubman freed, when she, when, she, when she got freed, she went back and helped others. And that's what God wants to do. God wants to use that, everything that we've been through to help others to get through. That's the only way that I can... I can help others is because of what, where I've been and I've helped people. And I ask God, I said, God, why is my life the way it has been? Why have I've suffered all this persecution? Why? You want to know why? It's because I can be compassionate to, to others. But what I love about God, Psalms 25 and three, no one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but the shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. And, you know, sometimes as you see in this illustration, when the fire's coming, you know what the fire does? The fire allows you to see how much power you get. And people are going to be watching. They, people are going to be watching and paying attention and, and things like that. Let, let folk talk. You know, Tom Landry, he said, a coach is someone who tells you what you do not want to hear and has see what you don't want to see so you can be who you always known you can be. And think about that. This this illustration, this, this fire showed him who he really was, like the armor of God that he had adjusted to whatever he went through. That's powerful. If he hadn't used that fire, the fire would have never showed him who he really was. That's how it is. Bobby Knight said the key is not the will to win. Everybody has that. It is the will to prepare to win that is important. Bob 
Nardelli, the CEO of Home Depot, said, I absolutely believe that people, unless coach, never reach their maximum capabilities. And this is where God is at. God is always with us. God is is, is there to help us. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it says iron sharpens iron. That's why we got to be careful who we hang around and stuff like that. We got to be careful who we take advice from. We got to use discernment because not everybody has good advice. Somebody may have great advice and invest in money, but that doesn't mean that they have great advice in managing relationships. We got, we got to be careful. Jose said coaching is taking a player where they can't take themselves. They also said work hard to get good, then work harder to get better. That's why I study every day. It says a coach is someone who always makes you do what you do not want to do so that you can be who you always wanted to be. There is no glory in practice. But without practice, there is no glory. And I put on the end in God. As you see right here in the illustration, like this coach is, had blindfolded him so he can go through these things. Because if he got to the 50-yard line, he would stop. And that's what God does. God doesn't allow us to see what's coming up. That's why we got to prepare because, like I told you, life happens. You know what I'm saying? Life catches us by surprise. And think about it. If we knew what was going to happen, you know, sometimes we got to go through divorce. Or sometimes a family member leaves this earth. Or whatever it case may be. Or we lose a job. Like, we got to go through that. You know, one of the first sermons I taught was some mountains we got to go through. And we got to learn how to get through them. But, you know, it's it's like, you know what I'm saying? When he's blindfolded, all you see is we just got to focus on God. That's why it says where we walk by faith and not by sight. We're not supposed to see everything. We're supposed to just trust God. At some point, you got to trust God. There's going to be, what, good times and times that's just that's not favorable. But in this illustration, he blindfolded him. His coach blindfolded him to show him what was really possible. And he's not going to know that until he get there. That's why some people would be like, well, how could you get to that? You know, people ask me like, you know, well, you know, how did you, you know, how, you know, why are you still on fire for God? And a pastor killed your aunt because it was a, a man that made a bad decision. His gift was preaching. I understand that. I asked God, God to tell you John 13 and seven. It says you need to understand now, but later on you will. At some point God was, you know, God will tell you why or, you know, let you understand in a way that will help you. And think about it. First Timothy four and eight, it says physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better prom promising benefits in the life and life to come. God is God is spiritually training you. God has to get you ready. But even in the wait, we still got to prepare. And like I said, the armor that God has for you, we always got to stay armored up. You always got to have your armor on. God is spiritually training you. God will place people in your life, you know, spiritual mentors, you know, saying sometimes, you know, it may be a father figure or a mother figure or whatever, or a big sister or something like that. Somebody that can help you grow closer to God. That's the relationships you need, 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 need to have, the friendship that you need to have, people that can help you grow to closer to God and, and not away from God. And, and, you know, and even if you experience some people that act like they really for God, not everybody is going to be be that, you know, and, and sometimes it, they may be seasons that you have to get rid of some people or you might have to love them from a distance. That's all. It's not saying they're a bad person. It's just saying, you know, where, where God has taken me, you know, they can't come if they have too much spiritual baggage because the airplane will not take off or if it gets in the air, it will crash. And you just have to pray for those individuals because sometimes they don't know any better, you know, but you just got to let folk talk. And as you see in here, look, they're, they're watching him. They're like, you know, they at the beginning, they were laughing and now they're watching him and they're seeing like how far, you know, he can go and let folk talk. That's why you just got to keep blindfolded and, and not worry about them and not look at that, not look at them Facebook posts and, and stuff like that. And people talking about you, let folk talk, let folk talk, because that's all they're going to do anyway. It don't matter. And listen, you don't even got to some some reactions don't need a reaction. You know, every reaction does not need a reaction. God will vindicate you. God will take care of him. Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that comes against you shall be condemned. Let let God do that. Because all of those that are talking about you, God is going to, to deal with them. You just focus on God. Sometimes you got to put them blindfolders on. You might have to unfollow some people. You might have to unfriend some people or whatever like that. Because that's just what it is. You know, you want to go closer to God. And you just pray for those individuals. And again, like I said, the storms come to show you how much power you have inside you. There's some things that you've been through that you never thought that you would have been, have gotten through there had you to went through it. There's so much inside of you, so much power. That's why it says greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Love y'all.
God bless and stay encouraged.